Nobody. They're all lying. They say, what about horse evolution? Yes, boys and girls, you see this? The four-toed horse evolved to the one-toed horse. That's a lie proven wrong 55 years ago. The hyrax is the so-called four-toed horse. They're still alive today in Africa and, and Turkey. <laughs> There's a little bitty critter. There's one right there, a hyrax. They don't tell you the early horse had 18 pairs of ribs. The next one had 15. These animals are not even related. They just picked some bones and put them in order they wanted them. The next one had 19 and then back to 18. This horse evolution theory was proven wrong a long time ago. There's a whole variety of horses today, by the way, big ones and little ones. But back in 1950, G.G. Simpson, a famous evolutionist, said, this horse evolution was unintentionally falsified. It's not true. The evolution of the horse was all wrong. It never happened in nature. They've, it's, horse evolution has not held up under close examination. The whole idea was made up by Othniel Marsh back in 1874. He picked animals from all over the world and put them in order the way he wanted it to happen. He never found them in that order, okay? Modern horses are found in the same layers as the so-called ancient horse. The ancient horse is just an animal still alive today in Turkey and East Africa. The ribs, toes, and teeth are different. In South America, the fossils are in the reverse order. Real problem. They're never found in the order presented in the textbooks. Tulsa Zoo finally took out their display because a friend of mine wrote him a letter and said, Hey, uh, why do you have the horse evolution on display? I've got the letters here somewhere. Did you get those out, Steve? The, they're in the suitcase? Okay. You can come read those later. He wrote him a letter and said, Guys, your horse evolution thing was proven wrong like uh, 50 years ago. You know, would you please remove the display? And they said, We don't have the funding to remove it. So he went to a sign shop and got a bid for a sign, 60 bucks or something, that says, we'll take this, the sign would say, we will take down this display as soon as we receive the funding, because the display is not accurate. He went into the curator at the zoo and said, uh, here's 60 bucks for the sign. This guy will make the sign. When would you like it delivered? He said, what's this? Oh, you're going to take down, the, we're going to take down the display when we get the funding. Yeah, he said, you at least warn the people, you know, the display is not right. Well, they didn't take it down. Finally, I forget, 2,000 people signed a petition saying, get this thing out of our zoo. It came on the evening news, 10 o'clock one night. Tulsa Zoo has a false display. Next morning, it was gone. They found the funding. Six months later, they put it back up. Yale University still has their horse evolution on display, proven wrong 55 years ago. Get more on the horse evolution in the book, Icons of Evolution. Just because you can arrange animals in order, that doesn't prove anything. Even if you find them buried in a certain order, that doesn't prove anything. If I get buried on top of a hamster, does that prove he's my grandpa? <laughs> no. Order of burial means nothing. But if you think you can arrange things and that somehow proves something, okay. I've been doing a lot of research on the evolution of the four. It's always amazed me how two people can look at the same thing and come to opposite conclusions of what they are looking at. You know, two people can look at Grand Canyon. One of them believes in evolution. He looks at the canyon and says, wow, look what the Colorado River did for millions and millions of years. The Bible believing Christian stands there, looks at the same canyon and says, wow, look what the flood did in about 30 minutes. Now, how was that canyon formed, huh? Textbook says, over millions of years, the Colorado River formed the Grand, carved the Grand Canyon from solid rock. Oh, now, hold on a second, okay? It's a fact the Grand Canyon exists. I've been there a bunch of times, studied. I taught her science for 15 years. I love studying Grand Canyon. There are two interpretations of how it got there. The evolutionists will say it formed slowly with a little bit of water and lots of time, like, you know, billions of years. The creationists will say, no, it formed quickly by lots of water and a little bit of time, like a big flood in the days of Noah. And the guys who believe in evolution are always trying to erase the line between their interpretation and try to include it as if it is part of the fact. <laughs> no, no, it's just your interpretation, guys, okay? This textbook says, the Colorado River has cut through layer upon layer of rock over millions of years. Well, now, hold on a minute. This textbook says, the Colorado River cut through 2,000 meters of rock, exposing sediment layers like huge pages in the Book of Life. Scan the canyon wall from rim to floor and you look back through hundreds of millions of years. I don't think so. I was in a debate one time and this atheist said, Hovind, you're so stupid. Don't you know it took millions of years to carve the Grand Canyon? I said, well, sir, there's a couple things you ought to learn about Grand Canyon. If you built a dam across Grand Canyon, a huge lake would fill in behind it, covering several states, okay? <laughs> I mean, take a lot of dirt to build a dam, but if you could build a dam across that canyon, you'd have a really big lake. 
Actually, some of the water from Wyoming drains through the Grand Canyon. It has a huge drainage pattern. Here's a picture of it, satellite false color uh, image. You can see Grand Canyon right there, a big gash right across a ridge in the mountains. You folks in Tennessee know what a ridge is. Not really a mountain, just a big long ridge, okay? I've flown by and taken lots of pictures. I asked the pilot one time, I was going, going, I said, man, are we going near Grand Canyon? He said, yeah, about 100 miles. I said, can you uh, get permission to, you know, divert and go closer? He said, ah, uh, let me see what I can do. He got permission, we flew right over the top of the canyon. I'm taking pictures like crazy, you know. Love studying Grand Canyon. Actually, it's a bunch of useless real estate. I mean, what would you do with it if you had it, you know? You can look at it and then go home, that's about it. But, I mean, you can't plow it, that's for sure, and you don't want your cows playing out there. But I said to this professor, I said, sir, there's a couple things to consider about this canyon. I said, these two red lines indicate what's called the snow line, okay? Between those two red lines is a ridge that gets about uh, 6,900 to 8,500 feet above sea level. Now, the river enters the canyon at the far right over there at 2,800 foot elevation. The river flows downhill for 270 miles, comes out the other side. If you look at it from a side view, a schematic view, it'll look like this. The river comes in 2,800 foot elevation. The ground rises up while the river goes down for 270 miles. I said, now, sir, there's a few things you ought to consider about this canyon. I said, did you know the top of Grand Canyon is higher than the bottom? He said, obviously. I said, sir, did you know the river only runs through the bottom? He said, well, yeah. I said, sir, did you know the top is higher than where the river enters the canyon by over 4,000 feet? He got a dazed look on his face like a calf looking at a new gate. I said, sir, did you know rivers don't flow uphill in Tennessee? There's no delta. Where's the mud that washed out of Grand Canyon? Nobody has a clue, okay? That river did not make that canyon. Grand Canyon's a washed out spillway. There used to be two big lakes, Grand Lake and Hopi Lake. The lakes are long gone, but the beaches are still there. You can still see the beach line. They got too full and went over the top and washed out that canyon in a hurry. Any farmer that's ever built a dam to hold water for his cows will tell you, once the water goes over the top of the dam, it's all over with. That's why they guard the levee like crazy during flood seasons, don't they? Get out there with sandbags. You don't want it to even get started. It, choof, it's gone in a flash, okay? This river flows down this, this way. Obviously, it started at the top. There must have been a big lake backed up there, too. Even El Paso, Texas is called El Paso because it's the pass, okay? I bet there used to be a big lake backed up behind El Paso that dried up and left the white sands of New Mexico behind. That's another long, interesting story. But if you look at Grand Canyon, it's pretty obvious it's a washed-out spillway, Okay? Almost all rivers around the world come together at what's called acute angles, less than 90 degrees. I mean, the rivers merge and keep going the same, you know, general direction. If you look at Grand Canyon, the rivers on the lower left are indeed merging at l acute angles, less than 90 degrees. But if you look at the upper right, the rivers are flowing backwards. Why would they do that? The rivers run backwards, hit the main channel, turn around, and come back out the other way. It's called a barbed canyon. There aren't many places like this on the planet. Well, this is evidence that a lake is draining, and as the water's running off the spillway backwards into the channel, it turns around or off the dam. Water runs off the dam into the low place, turns around and comes back out through the crack, through the breach in the dam. Grand Canyon was not made by the Colorado River over millions of years. That is one of the lies you kids are going to face in your textbook. It's just not geophysically possible for that to happen. Now, are there any farmers or vets in the crowd that might know what this machine is? What is that, brother? That's a calf puller. That's a what? A calf puller. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, a cow has a hard time having that baby calf, and so they get the calf puller out, tie the cable around the calf's legs, and <coughs> jack the calf out of the cow. You get a few tons of pressure on there, calf comes right out, no problem. Well, one day, this farmer was out pulling a calf. It was a breech birth. The back feet are coming out first. That's not good, but you know, it happens once in a while. So the farmer had the calf puller out there, and he's <coughs> trying to pull the calf out of the cow. And a city fellow stopped his car to see what on earth is going on. And the farmer said, have you ever seen anything like this before? The city fellow said, I have never seen nothing like this. The farmer said, do you have any questions? The city fellow said, yes, sir, I have one question. It's been bugging me for 10 minutes. The farmer said, well, uh, what's your question? And the city fellow said, how fast do you figure that calf was going when it ran into that cow? 